Hello and welcome to our presentation on the Draft Volume 2 District Design Guidelines for Annandale. In today's presentation, we will walk you through an overview of the Draft Guidelines for Annandale, including how the design guidelines work, why we are updating an earlier version of the Annandale Design Guidelines, identify the major changes from the previous version, and explain how you can provide your input on the draft. Design guidelines help further the goals of the comprehensive plan by providing greater detail on how a community's vision can be achieved via the design choices of private development and public improvement projects. The county uses design guidelines to review and evaluate development proposals. However, they are not regulatory, meaning they are not hard and fast requirements for development approval. Rather, design guidelines such as the draft presented here are used to help guide choices, but they can be flexibly applied to meet site-specific needs. Urban design guidelines have been used in certain areas of Fairfax County, particularly in commercial revitalization districts such as Annandale, and in emerging urban centers such as Tyson's and Reston for at least 10 years, and in some cases, two or more decades. In the past, some of the guidance has been incorporated into the comprehensive plan, but because best practices, styles, and materials can change over time, it is now preferred to have guidelines as separate, standalone documents that work in concert with the comprehensive plan. This makes updating the guidelines much easier in order to remain current. The existing Annandale Urban Design Guidelines were created in 2011 following an update to Annandale's comprehensive plan. The guidelines were about 25 pages in length, covering topics such as building and site design and streetscape design. The document was predicated mostly on the comprehensive plan and the Columbia Pike streetscape plan from the 1990s. This slide gives you a sense of the look, the feel, and format of the 2011 document. You can also review a copy of the 2011 document on the Revitalization website at www.fcrevite.org if you would like to look at the document in greater detail. Urban Design Guidelines for Commercial Revitalization Districts and Areas, also known as CRDs and CRAs, can be found on the Revitalization website under the Publications tab. In Fairfax County, Urban Design Guidance for Development in our CRDs and CRAs is contained in two volumes. These volumes work hand in hand. Volume 1 provides big picture guidance and best practices on topics such as site design, landscaping, parking, and street design for all county CRDs and CRAs. These guidelines were endorsed by the Board of Supervisors in 2018 and are in use today. Volume 2 is specific to each district and details more character defining elements in a community, such as building architecture and materials, streetscape materials and furniture, signage, etc. In the case of Annandale, design guidelines were created in 2011 following the update to the comprehensive plan. At the time, no volume one for the CRDs and CRAs existed, so that was all that was used to provide guidance in Annandale. However, due to the creation and the adoption of volume one design guidelines in 2018, it was decided that all areas would have a separate volume two. Additionally, best practices have evolved considerably since 2011, and so it was determined that an update of the Annandale guidelines was necessary. This process began in late 2018, starting initially with text analysis and agency coordination. It continued in 2019 with updates to streetscape furnishings and materials for the public realm and additional agency coordination. In 2020, additional edits were made resulting in a final draft in December 2020. Now we are conducting briefings and collecting community feedback on the Draft Volume 2 District Design Guidelines for Annandale. This next series of slides will step through the modifications in more detail, but in general, this update has involved reformatting the document, eliminating redundant text, conceptually integrating separate policies impacting the layout of streets, and finally, updating standards for streetscape materials and furnishings in the public realm. One big change to the design guidelines is the look, the feel, and the organization of the document. On the left, you can see the cover page and topics covered in the 2011 document. On the right, you can see the new cover page design and organization of the district guidelines, including explaining how Volume 2 relates to Volume 1. Chapter 2, Site and Building Design, now has a new topic, Electric Vehicles, and a new section on Townhouses Design. These new additions reflect the changing times, as well as the need to provide more guidance to developers on the expectations for how to appropriately step back, orient, 
and treat a more urban style of townhomes that is appropriate in the Annandale CBC as it transforms over time. Perhaps the biggest change from the 2011 design guidelines is the addition of a new standalone Chapter 3 to the draft. As you can see in the map to the right, Chapter 3 provides an overview of the street network and the classification of different street types and streetscape treatments. This new chapter visually depicts full cross-sections of the different street types that conceptually integrate various county policies impacting the public right-of-way and public realm elements. This new chapter was created to provide an accessible visual aid that depicts the ideal expectations for the street network. This modification was needed because policies and best practices evolve over time. For instance, in 2010, when the comprehensive plan was approved for Annandale, bicycle facilities were not integrated into the street design for Little River Turnpike, a boulevard streetscape. The bike master plan was not finalized until 2014, and Little River Turnpike required further study before final recommendations could be made. However, today's best practices emphasize the integration of multimodal options into our public streets. Therefore, these cross-sections depict the ideal facilities for all street users in an effort to lessen any confusion that may result from trying to piece together separate policies affecting the street. We will come back to this topic in a later slide. Chapter 4 is dedicated to elements in the public realm. Items such as landscaping, lighting, benches, trash cans, and hardscape materials used to treat sidewalks and paths. This chapter features numerous updates. Section 4A is dedicated to landscaping. This section carried forward a number of recommendations from the 2011 guidance, but also supplements them with new species unique to Annandale, including the suitability of certain trees, shrubs, and grasses and ground covers for different types of spaces such as streets, parks, or plazas. It should also be noted that these recommendations are in addition to those provided in Volume 1. Section 4B outlines the typical hardscape materials that are recommended for sidewalks and amenity zones in the landscape panels. The prior standard for Annandale sidewalks was brick pavers, as can be observed on roads such as Columbia Pike. However, due to maintenance and accessibility concerns associated with brick pavers, the new standard is poured concrete. In the landscape panel, trees with landscaping beds will alternate with amenity zones, small amenity areas that feature limited accent pavers and contain public realm elements such as lighting, benches, and trash cans. One modification that requires additional explanation is the streetscape treatment for the boulevard street type. Little River Turnpike is the only road in Annandale designated as a boulevard street type. As discussed earlier, when the comprehensive plan for Annandale was adopted in 2010, bicycle facilities were not addressed. With time, policies and best practices have evolved, and the need for bicycle facilities, whether separate from the pedestrian path or combined with it, has become paramount to placemaking and improving transportation in and around communities. In Annandale, the portions of existing development along Little River Turnpike makes execution of the streetscape vision more challenging due to the public right-of-way requirements for a future widened Little River Turnpike. Legacy development patterns present in the central core, including small, shallow lot sizes, contributes to this difficulty. In an effort to recognize these constraints, but also achieve the intent of the comprehensive plan vision, the new draft guidelines outline Little River Turnpike as having two distinct zones when it comes to the integration of bicycle facilities, unconstrained and constrained areas. In the unconstrained portions of Little River Turnpike, a separate cycle track and sidewalk is proposed to move bicyclists and pedestrians alike. As described before, the material recommendation for the sidewalk would be poured concrete and the material recommendation for the bicycle facility would be asphalt. In the constrained portion of Little River Turnpike in the central core, an urban shared use path is proposed. This would provide a combined 10-foot bicycle and pedestrian facility to move pedestrians and bicyclists the material recommendation for the urban shared use path would be tinted poured concrete that complements the pavers in the amenity zone. Furnishings are also an important part of creating the character of the public realm. You may have seen elements such as benches and trash receptacles in parts of Annandale. Under the newest draft guidelines, the recommended bench style will tie in with the existing benches, 
by featuring a clean, linear line aesthetic. Benches should be black powder coated and have vertical slats for seats and backs, simple details, and armrests. Under the newest guidelines, the recommended trash receptacle style will tie in with the style of the existing trash receptacles in Annandale by featuring a clean, linear aesthetic as well. Trash receptacles should be black powder coated and have vertical slats with simple details. They also should feature weather domes, which could be used to mount smart technology hardware in the future. Smart technology can be used to monitor trash levels and adjust trash pickup times, resulting in resource efficiencies. Ballers are used to distinguish areas where there could be pedestrian and vehicular conflicts. Bollards, when used in Annandale, should be cylindrical and not overly ornamental. Tree grates are no longer recommended due to evolving best practices for the health of trees. Therefore, there is no recommendation for tree grates in the new draft district guidelines. A more stylistic loop for bike racks is recommended in the latest draft guidelines. The finish should be black. The bus shelter style also has been updated to a Euro shelter in black. The new bus shelter style is recommended by the county's Department of Transportation since it is more modern and provides a communication panel. The county's zoning ordinance for Article 12 signs was updated to be content neutral in March 2019, and the existing design guidelines section on signage needed to be updated to reflect these changes. Article 12 regulations should guide signage on private property. This updated section focuses on gateway and wayfinding signage in the public realm. Lighting in the public realm also is a change from the previous guidance and standards observed in the area. These photos show examples of existing lighting in Annandale. The cobra head lighting fixture, shown either as a standalone light or attached to an overhead utility pole, is oriented towards vehicles on the road, and the acorn light is oriented toward pedestrians walking on sidewalks. The issue with the current acorn light in Annandale is that the model is not dark skies compliant meaning the fixture contributes to light pollution. To reduce the overall light pollution in the commercial area, it is better to select a different design. However, the current options available from Dominion Energy are somewhat limited. The new full cutoff acorn light fixture selected for Annandale is the image shown in blue. This fixture is dark skies compliant and should be a compatible transitional model until new options are available. The county continues to work with Dominion to expand the options available and, if approved, would favor the bottom pedestrian light shown in red. Also, the new Cobra light recommendation for larger roads, which require additional illumination, is shown in gold. All lighting fixtures would feature black finish with clean lines, complementing other elements in the public realm. Chapter 4, Public Realm Design, now has a new section on public art. The section provides more guidance to developers on how best to incorporate public art into the Annandale CBC as it transforms over time. Finally, a new before and after conceptual rendering is offered in Chapter 3 to help the reader see the future streetscape changes envisioned for Little River Turnpike. In this presentation, we have sought to provide a high-level, yet thorough, overview of the modifications to the 2011 Annandale Urban Design Guidelines that have resulted in the Draft Volume 2 District Design Guidelines for Annandale. If you wish to look over the document in more depth, there is a copy provided on the Revitalization website for your review. Please fill out the feedback form, and in particular, let us know your thoughts on the furnishings and hardscape materials selected for the public realm. Also, please let us know if you think there is another important topic that we may have overlooked. Submit your feedback on the website by Thursday, February 25th. And finally, feel free to share this opportunity to provide feedback with your Annandale networks. Should you have additional questions, please feel free to reach out to the Annandale Program Manager. Also, continue to stay informed by visiting the Revitalization website at www.fc revite.org and follow the prompts to navigate to the Annandale District Design Guidelines webpage. With that, our presentation now concludes. Thank you for your time.